Welcome to Your Own Yoga, everyone. Welcome, Ken, then. Thanks for joining us today. All right. Thank you. Today we're going to look at a yoga practice in case somebody has a shoulder injury. Shoulder injuries are not always the same for each and every person. So what I'm going to offer today will try to be pretty generic, but you'll have to try it on your body and see if it hurts. Even if I offered something, please don't do it, right? But we can see how it's possible to practice even with a shoulder injury. And uh, Kent's going to help us today. So Kent had a little injury on his right shoulder, right? Yeah, it's torn. And, okay. So we're going to try and give it, definitely not put weight on it, no chaturangas or down dog today, but also kind of be gentle in the stretches. And that's where it really differs between one person and another. So we're just going to come to the front of the mat. And uh, just take a moment here in Tadasana and Samastitihi. Just finding a moment to lengthen, to grow tall, to find the breath, the ujjayi breath. So we're going to try and keep our practice alive with our bandhas, with a little bit of the belly and a little bit of the pelvic floor lifted. And as much as possible, we're going to keep the shoulders down and relaxed, right? So we want to make sure we're not going too far forward today with the shoulders or too far back, but keeping it pretty neutral. One more deep breath here. Okay, so we're going to start with just kind of a half sun salute. So we're just going to bring the hands to the hips, and then as we inhale, we're going to really lengthen and just lean back a tiny bit. You can take even the feet a little wider so it's a little more steady. And just a little bit back, and then coming up and over, exhale, forward folding. I'm going to bend the knees probably, Kent, a little bit as well just to make sure the spine's okay. And then inhale, we're gonna come up slowly all the way back up. And exhale, lean back again a little bit. This is our upward dog with no shoulders. And back up to center. Take a breath. Let's do this again. Inhale, lengthen and lean a little bit back. And exhale, coming up and all the way forward and down. Your choice whether you bend the knees or not. Inhale, slowly coming all the way up. And exhale, leaning back. Good. Inhale, back to center. Just take a breath. Let's do this one last time. Inhale, lengthen up. Lengthen up first, and we'll go back. And exhale, forward fold. Good. Inhale, back up. And exhale, leaning back, lifting. And back to some sticky. Cool. Now we're going to kind of work on our low lunge, high lunge without doing the whole vinyasa thing. So... You can have the feet apart or together. Hands can be a namaste. And we're going to step the right foot far back and try to keep the bandha steady and the gaze very steady so you're very focused. If you're in one line with the feet and it's shaky, move your right leg a little more to the right. Good. And then let's take a few of just bending down and straightening and bending. So we're going to bend the right knee. Good. And then straighten both legs. Good. Bending both knees almost to the ground. And inhale up, two more, exhale down, inhale up, last one, exhale, inhale. Let's bend the front knee and bend the right knee all the way to the ground. Bring the hands to the hips, a little low lunge here. Good, again, lengthening, the shoulders have no pressure. So, right? What I find is when we have an injury somewhere, it's an opportunity to deepen the practice in other places. So we can't do as much arm balances. We can work on stretching our quads, our hamstrings, in this case, the hip flexors. Just taking another deep breath. Make sure you've got your bandhas alive so you have space in the lower back. Beautiful, here comes the hard part. So tucking the back toes under and really use those bandhas. Lift in the belly to press up Good. Keep the gaze very steady. Try to step your right foot to meet the left. If you need to do it in two steps, that's okay too. Good news. We got another side. Here we go. Left foot reaches far back. Awesome. Good. Here we go. Let's do four of these straightening and bending. So straighten both legs. Inhale. Exhale, bending down. Inhale, up. Exhale, bending down. Two. Inhale. Exhale, really following your breath. Inhale, or 
which is slowly down. Last one, inhale up. And this time we're gonna go down all the way, bringing the left knee to the ground. Good, hands come to the hips. You can untuck the back toes, taking a few breaths in the low lunge. Right. Notice how Kent's keeping his neck really long and his shoulders down. So many of our perpetuating injuries, the things that just don't want to heal are because we keep practicing in a stressful way rather than a relaxed way. Good. And Kent is definitely sinking way down right. His hips are heavy to the ground, very kapha, very earthy, while his spine is pita reaching up, so there's no pressure on the lower back. Last deep breath. Good. Tucking the toe. Pressing strong into the back leg. Beautiful. Looking forward. Stepping it slowly. Gorgeous. So what Kent did is he brought his hips forward and then the foot followed. That's how he managed to do it like Nadia Comaneci. Great. So we're going to go from here into a triangle variation. So let's do it Ashtanga style. We're going to open the right foot and turn back to the back of the room. So go ahead and turn the right foot all the way back. We're going to turn sideways. Instead of taking the left arm up, we're going to keep it your choice. You can keep it on the hip. If it feels good for you to stretch it, you can place it behind the back. We're just not going to take it in the air. So easy. Straightening the front leg. Turning the body side up sideways for triangle. Reaching forward and then going down. Perfect. Good. Beautiful. So keeping the tailbone tucked, which Kent already has, but some of us tend to stick the butt out and get a little too much curvature in the back. You can still work on lengthening, opening, right? Right leg, the front leg is very active. It's almost like the kneecap is lifting to protect that thigh. Good. And then inhale, coming up. We're going to turn, so just turn the feet, pivot on the feet and we'll do Trikonasana Triangle on the other side. All right, reaching. So even though there's a hand down, there's technically no weight on that hand. We're using our bandhas, our core, to keep us up. You can take any hand down variation that you like to the floor, to the big toe, to the shin. It doesn't matter. Just make sure there's no weight on it, right? You're still lifted. The spine is long. That's fantastic. Notice Ken just brought the chin slightly in towards the chest, and you can see now his neck is even longer, right? There's no stretch for tension there. Inhale, slowly coming up, and we're going to step it to the front of the mat. Gorgeous. Okay. This time, let's open the left foot. So we're going to open the left foot to the left side. We're going for Prasarita Parutanasana. Feet are parallel to each other. We're going to place the hands on the hips. Starting with A, inhale, creating length, and exhale, forward folding. The hands do come to the floor, but again, there's not much weight on the hands, so there shouldn't be any issue with the shoulder. Lengthening the spine and forward folding. In case this is somewhat easy, feel free to walk the hands back so eventually your fingernails and toenails are in one line or even a little further back. We are bringing the elbows slightly in towards each other, which creates space between the shoulder blades, right? This will make sure there's no tension in the neck. And then the head just drops down. Let it relax. Legs are working. We're activating the quads. And just staying here for another three breaths, right? I can hear his ujjayi breath. Stay that space. would be all one leg. <laughs> <laughs> Could have drawn all one way. Scalp. Nice. <laughs> okay, here we go. Lengthening the spine. Exhale, hands to the hips, right? Using the core to come up. Slowly inhale all the way up. Okay, we're going to do one more. Your choice. You can take Prasarita C if you find that it helps you to stretch the shoulders, but for many of us with an injury, probably not a good idea, and maybe you just want to keep the hands on the hips for the second one, Prasarita B. So we'll keep the hands on the hips today. Inhale, lengthen first, and then exhale, coming forward. Good. Hips move a little bit back to balance the weight forward, and Ken's going to go all the way down to wherever his legs, his hamstrings are going to allow him. 
the elbows will come up a bit towards the sky, right? Not to crunch too much. Perfect, right? So there's not too many wrinkles here. Head and neck are relaxing down. Mm. His belly is lifted to support him. Good. Breathing. I'm just giving him a little extra juiciness into this pose. Great, he's going to tuck the belly in so he can have a lot of strength coming all the way up. If you need to bend in the knees to come up, that's perfectly fine. Great. We're going to do a couple more things here. So Kent's going to go even a little wider, and then he's going to start to bend the knees, hips back. Good, here we go. And then we're going to take the arms up. If this is like, oh, chihuahua, not fun on the shoulders, just keep the hands on the hips, right? If you feel like, okay, this is strengthening my arms, there's no pressure, great. So do what feels good for you. If you still have energy and you're with us, lift the heels up. Good. And if you start shaking in the legs, fantastic, right? Here's another option. I'm going to put the hands on the shoulders as a slightly middle variation. A little work, but not too much. I'm going to take here another three. Since it's pretty easy for Kent, he's going to lift the heels even more. Good. Two. How's your breath, everyone? Oh, okay. Stay, stay, stay. Okay, it's all over. Straightening the legs, release the arms. Step it to the front of the mat and shake your legs away a bit. Okay, let's go for um, Parshvottanasana. So we're going to take the right foot and turn it over to the right side, facing again the back of the room. Great. Ashtanga style today, just for fun. So instead of taking the reverse namaste, which may be intense for some of us, we're just going to hold opposite elbows. You can, you're welcome to keep the hands on the hips as well, perfectly fine. So just, yeah, let's keep the hands on the hips. Hips are square and forward. Inhale, length. And exhale as his head and chest come forward. His hips are moving a little bit back, right? Talking way, and that lower belly comes in to create space. Good. You can see he's got a micro bend in the knee. The knee is the leg is not locked, though it is straight. Beautiful. Keep pressing into the back leg. Reach a bit the chest forward, tailbone back, and lower down a little more. Yeah. So we're gonna try and go crazy. We're gonna try and come up to warrior three. It's fine. We're just gonna keep the hands as is, or even you can bring the hands to the heart if you like. And uh, if you fall, it's not a big fall, so there shouldn't be any too much pressure on the hands. Just breathing here, another three. Steady gaze. Two. One, good. Slowly the back foot comes down. Gorgeous, look at that beauty. Slowly straightening the leg, the front leg. Pivot the feet so we're facing the other side of the mat. Good. Adjusting the hips square as forward as possible. Hands on the hips. Inhale, creating length. And exhale, slowly forward folding. So the back leg, right, Kent has it about 45 degrees forward, which is awesome. If it's really challenging, bring the back toes more forward. If it's way too easy, keep the back foot more parallel to the short side of your mat. Taking another few breaths here, the hips a little bit back, chest and head forward, right, let's see, oh yeah, his hamstrings are saying hello, two, perfect, we're going to transition slowly to balance on the left leg in warrior three, hands can be on the hips or at the heart, your choice, Good. and if you need to, if it's tight in the hamstrings, it's always fine to bend a bit in the standing leg, trying to lower slightly the right hip down so the hips are a little more square. Good, good, good. It's the intention that counts, even if you don't get it fully straight. Perfect. Slowly reaching back, landing steady, and then stepping it forward to the front of the mat. Hallelujah. So we're going to have Kent, instead of facing the front of the mat, we want you to see his beautiful face. So we're going to have him face the front as we go and do some cappuccino. So we're just going to chill out. Um, this is an option. You can take tree pose right here or here. 
but we're going to try and get some hip stretching while we're at it. So we're going to place the ankle just like Ken has it over the knee and taking the hips further back as we lower down. So try not to move too far forward with your knee because that's too much pressure on the knee. Beautiful. And you can see his chest is open, his shoulders are relaxed. Just staying here for three deep breaths. See if you can even listen to your breath, maybe drink some green tea, right? Not real cappuccinos. It's your coffee. <laughs> he is becoming an Ayurvedic master, so. Beautiful. We're going to slowly start to lift up. How's your standing leg? Can you do a little more? Sure. Bring the right leg forward, straighten the leg, bring the hands to the hips. Let's hold here for another four. Good. So what happens here when the hamstrings are tight, people tend to lean back. Kent's pretty straight up. But don't be tempted to just lift the leg as high as possible. Keep it as high as possible while keeping the back straight. And lift a bit higher and release down. Good. Perfect. Here we go. We have another side. Good. Breath is deep. Gaze is steady. Belly slightly lifted. Hips go as far down as possible. Hips more back, right? So we make sure we're not putting pressure on the knee. Keeping the foot even a little flexed to protect that knee, the left foot, yeah. Try and make a slow exit. Just coming up slow, steady. Beautiful strengthening the left leg, hands to the hips. You can even point the toes a little bit, that'll make it a little more user friendly. Mm -hmm. So let's try to lean a little less back. Good. And lift as high as possible. Great. Yeah, awesome. Okay. So, one last standing pose and then we'll go down to the ground. We're going to take half eagle pose, Gavadasana. We're going to take the eagle legs. Some of you can even take the eagle arms and it's fine. We're going to just keep the hands in Namaste in prayer position today. So, Kent already wrap the right leg. In order to get the full wrap, you got to bend the standing leg. In this case, it was the left leg. And then, even if you don't have the full wrap, that's fine. Whatever you can go over is okay. You're still balancing, still working on your hips. His elbows are lifting up um, as he is lowering his hips, which makes it more challenging and maybe you lose the balance. As long as you're willing to smile, nothing wrong with that. Good. And he's going to start to really slow and steady. Good. Leg releases. Nice. Last side, out of the two. Good, notice the leg bends. Again, if you got the hook of the foot, great. If not, just as great. Good. Belly lifted, gaze steady, maybe trying to lift the elbows somewhat. Again, easy on the shoulders. If you feel a pinch or it doesn't feel good, just keep the hands at your heart. Uh, okay, we're all going to release slow and steady. Good. Okay. So taking the feet a little wider apart, one more work on the legs since we're here. We're going to lift up the heels and we're going to one more time start to go down. Again, the hips are moving down just like a Pacino, except this time both legs are going, both legs are on the ground, so a little steadier. I'm going to try and still lift the chest perfect. Taking three. Shoulders are relaxed, head and neck relaxed, two, one. So we won't go for a crow pose today, we're just going to lower down to malasana, to a squat. If it's difficult, turn the feet out, if it's easy, bring the feet more parallel. Bring the elbows in and try to grow tall. I'm not using much shoulder or any at all, right? I'm kind of lifting from my belly and from my head reaching up, it pulls my spine tall. Just hang out here, letting your hips say hello. And if you sit on a chair, I don't know why you would, but if you do, this pose is a great antidote. One last deep breath. 
And then since this is so relaxing, it's time to do a little bit of work. So we're just going to lean back, have a seat, and you can use your hands to lean back. Bring the knees up partway and listen to your spine here, right? We're going to go to Navasana, to boat pose, or what I like to call hammock pose. I'm going to lift the legs a little more. Some of us will stay here. Some of you will even straighten the legs. Since this may or may not be good for your shoulders, again, feel free. You can do Navasana with hands of the heart. The arms are not a must. You're still, I don't know, I can feel my core. How's your core doing? Feel it. Feel it. That's all we want, right? Three, two, one. Here we go. So we're going to just squeeze to create space in the spine, lengthen. But this pose is really not a pose unless you do at least three of them. So. It's like pancakes. The first one is warm up. Good. Here, we've got a different variation of the arms, shoulders are still very relaxed, head and neck are relaxed, legs are working, core is working to stabilize, lips are slightly stretching towards the ears. Good. Crossing the legs, lift, lengthen. One more. Easy today. Beautiful. Keep listening to the sound of your breath. One more breath. That squeeze it. Beautiful. So we're gonna um, just go and lay down on our belly and do some back strengthening poses um, without using the shoulders. So we will stick on um, the upward facing dog. So I'm just gonna lay down on his belly, okay. just the arms there. Great, so the first thing we're gonna work on is just activating the, um, the hamstrings. So just keeping the feet down, press them into the ground, lift the knees off the ground, just the knees. Knees off the ground, more. So hips down, just legs. All right, so we wanna get this to work. Yeah, there we go, All right? So you can see now there's space underneath, his feet are still on the ground, legs are working, Good, and with this, this is the kind of work we want. We don't want it to go all into the lower back. We want the hamstrings to help us lift. He's gonna to start to peel off his chest into Shalabhasana. His hands are gonna stay on the ground, just keeping it easy on the shoulders today. Three, two, good, and rest. Good. You can move your hips a bit from side to side. You can even bend the knees and move the legs from side to side to create a little release in the lower back. We're going to do this one again. So here's the thing. You can do the exact same thing. If it feels good to clasp the hands and lift back, great. If that's too much pressure, okay. You can even do sphinx instead. But we're going to try and work on strengthening the back. So Kent's got the arms clasped, legs up. Big toes reaching towards each other, yippity yep. You can still see he's got length in his neck, right? He's lifting the head a bit, but not too much. One more deep breath here, and lowering down. Good. Again, releasing a bit in the lower back. Beautiful, we're gonna press this back into a wide knee child's pose. So just easy on your shoulders, lifting up. Your knees are down, so there shouldn't be much weight there. And just surrendering again, allowing the hips to kind of drop down towards the feet, towards the legs, towards the heels, really. We'll take your two deep breaths, two more deep breaths. Good. Really making sure your shoulders are relaxed. In this case, they are. Okay, we're going to continue with uh, some more back bends, but before we do that, we'll take a uh, pigeon so we can relax a bit in pigeon and then we'll do our camel pose. So we're going to bring the right foot forward, right, straightening the legs, trying as much as possible to adjust the hips forward, right? For a lot of us this means the left thigh needs to roll in. He's created length and from this length he starts to come down. And we're going to stay here for a little while and breathe. Good. Just 
slowly adjusting his hips to even more square, putting a tiny bit of pressure on his left side while helping his right thigh slightly external rotate. Right. No pressure on the shoulder here. Getting some good, nice, fresh breeze here. Pressure okay? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, slowly starting to come up. So we're going to skip our vinyasa. We're just going to take the right foot back and do the left side. Or oh, better yet, just flip over to the other side. Thank you, Kent. All right, adjusting the hips. Some of us may need to eat. Kent has it, but sometimes I look back to make sure that the leg is in line with the hip. He's got it fine, but I know I tend to take it out to the side to compensate. Lengthening and with the exhale whenever you're ready. Slowly come down. <laughs> the cat is in the cat in shot. Okay, finding deep breath. So when we're doing these yin-like poses, right, when we're staying longer in poses, I really like to deepen the exhales. When we deepen the exhales, we allow the parasympathetic system to be activated, right? That's kind of dropping away from the fight or flight, from the normal daily stress and coming into this place of surrender, of relaxation, which is really, really, really important for healing. So in this case, you can either just be here and listen to your deep exhales, you can feel the torture of your hips being stretched, or you can send healing energies to your shoulders. And make sure that you're not vomiting your exhales, right? That they're long, slow, smooth breaths. Beautiful. Slowly coming up. Great. So we're going to um, set up for camel pose. So have your, any way you want to face, perfect. Trying to make sure your knees are roughly hip width. If you need to cheat a little bit, that's fine. We're going to start with the first version without taking the hands back at all. First version, hands are going to be on the hips. And we're going to really work on the alignment. So it sounds kind of silly to work on tucking the tailbone here and getting bandhas, but it's going to really help your lower back. So tucking the tailbone and oh, I just saw that lift, right? He really lifted up from his sternum, not taking the ribs too far out and trying to keep this as you exhale, start to lean back. For some of us, it's an inch. For some of us, it's 20 inches. Go just to a medium space that feels good, right? If it's okay on your head and neck, take the head back. If not, you can keep the chin tucked forward. Good, inhale, go a little further back. Good, and then to come up, try to imagine that you're coming up one vertebra at a time, right? So your head and neck are last. Take those, don't worry, we won't stay here too long, just a couple of breaths. And then we'll do it again. So coming back up, and this time your choice, right? You can do the exact same thing that's perfectly awesome, or if it feels good, you're welcome to either tuck the toes under and then the heels will be higher up to reach, right? Exactly as Kent is showing us, and we'll, we'll work that way today. If you don't need that, you don't need that. I'm going to make sure Kent's hips are forward, which he's got, right? But a lot of us tend to cheat and take the hips back. Not the end of the world, but over time, work on hips forward. Really lengthening up here. And if it's not killer, walking down if it is, keeping the hands on the hips, and eventually coming up, taking child's pose as we're back. Good. The intensity there, or it's okay. Here we go, last one. So you decide, do you want to go a little more or do you want to go a little less or maybe the same? Listen to your body, right? Always creating the length with the inhale, with the exhale going down, making sure we're not overly stressing in the shoulders or neck. Beautiful breathing for three. I don't even need to adjust the hips, they're already forward. I can see the sternum lifting. This is beautiful alignment. Good, last deep breath here. 
and then slowly, slowly coming up. One last child's pose, please. And you can decide if you want the hands forward or alongside the body. Either way is fine. Whatever feels good on your shoulders. So we're going to come to sit facing you guys and we're going to do a little bit of a hip opener and we're going to start adding some forward folds here. Perfect. So opening the feet. No, mine got dirty. No. <laughs> Inhale. Creating length and exhale starting to move forward, right? Some of us will move way down. Some of us will stay back here with the hands behind the back, right? Working on tilting the pelvis forward is our work rather than just dropping the shoulders into slambhasana. So always try to create a bit of length and then reach down from that length. Gorgeous. Right? Ken's putting his elbows on the thighs, which help a little bit to get the thighs down. If you're pretty far down and you want to move your hands forward, that's great. Notice that you're not bringing the shoulders up, but rather relaxing them down. Perfect. We'll take here three or four deep breaths. Hopefully you can hear your breath. I can hear mine and Ken's. That's a good sign. Beautiful. We're going to come up. Just keep the right foot exactly as it is. Just take the left foot forward. Janu Shurshasana 8. Make sure your foot's not too far forward, but rather the thigh is moving into the hip socket. Good. Inhale, create a little bit of length. And exhale, slowly start to come down. If you're coming down and your hamstring is about to pop out and you're like, oh no, second injury, by all means, either sit on a block or bend the left knee a little bit so that you can actually create that space in the lower back, right? That's the important part. And then slowly surrender down to wherever it may be, right? There's a hint of work here. The belly is lifted. The shoulders are relaxing. Looking good. Like a pretty relaxed, happy face. Love it. <laughs> we'll take them two more breaths. You stay. You stay. Get some loving. Okay. And then there's another side. Not too much loving. <laughs> Even too much loving can be dangerous, right? You might be on the bed. There you go. Okay, you're getting a side view. So what I'm doing is I'm just making sure Kent's heel is in line with his hips, right? So it's one line and the toes are up, trying to notice that we're not rolling in or out. And then lengthening and coming forward into the pose. Oh, just stretching. Yeah. So here's an example, right? Kent says, oh, it feels good to stretch a bit in the shoulder here. If it feels great for you, do it, right? We're not anymore in this, like, people used to believe in mice, in rice, sorry, rest, ice, compress, elevate, right? Just really let everything rest. Today, most people have realized that actually some movement is good, right? Mice move, ice, and so on and so on. So we want to create movement, we just don't want to go sharp movement, we don't want to go hard where it's hurting. But if it's a little bit of a stretch, that's great, so you don't get too much of scar tissue. Here comes the wind. Hopefully that means they agree with me. Auspicious. <laughs> uh, let's bring both legs forward. Good. Again, if you need to sit on a block, that's great. If not, and you don't have a block, we don't have one here right now. Kent either comes down with straight legs or bends the knees a bit. Bends the knees a little bit. Good. Lengthening belly is slightly in to create more of that movement forward. Paschimottanasana. Mm, I just saw him relax the shoulders. Really important. There's this tendency to pull ourselves forward with the arms, with the shoulders. And if we want to pull forward and you don't have me giving you a hands-on adjustment, sorry I can't do it through the video, Really try to create that lift in the belly and then go forward. It's almost like your tailbone roots back and down towards the earth while the belly lifts up and that creates a little more space for the forward fold. Good, last two breaths. Let's let the head dangle down so we really can 
relaxed here, right? You can even do this for longer than what we're doing and just place a block or something underneath the head some, somehow to let your head relax. Right, coming back up. We'll do a couple more seated poses before we go on to our back. Let's go for um, seated and we're gonna actually take the legs wide apart for Upavishta Konasana. Yeah, so oh, nice popping. We're keeping the toes facing up, right? Even if you're a dancer and you like to point, keep the legs flexed. You can see his quads are working, creating the length. His hands are behind the back, helping the pelvic tilt. And then you can stay there if that's where you need. If you can do the pelvic tilt without the hands, eventually starting to move forward, either holding the legs or hands on the ground, forearms on the ground. Whatever works for you today is fine, right? We're Feeling a little stretch in the adductors here and the muscles on the inside of the thighs. We'll just take here a nice three breaths. And again, if this is, obviously it's not hurting this shoulder, otherwise you wouldn't do it. But if it were, you can always place the hands on the ground. That's perfectly fine. Great. We're going to stretch our quads a tiny bit. I know we did that earlier. So we're going to come into just one more forward fold with the right foot bending back. You can do it facing this way. So, um, again, some of us need to sit on a block and that's perfectly fine. Or if you're like, no, no, I don't have a block or a pillow, anything. Uh, you can even just do the Janusha Shasana again. Over time, work on bringing both knees closer together. Mm, yeah. Lengthen and start to come down. As Kent's gonna come down, at least for me, do you feel like you're kind of wanting to fall a bit to one side? Mm. No? Okay, yeah. good. Come a little forward. Okay. Yeah, if it does feel like your one hip is about to leave the ground, you can use the hand, in this case probably the left hand, to press you a little bit so both hips are um, pressing on to the ground, right? You're looking to eventually have both sitting bones rooting down towards the earth. Just last couple breaths. It's another forward fold, a little extra hamstrings. Maybe you feel a stretch in your, um, in your either leg, like in the shin or in the quads or the ankle, wherever is tight, that's where you're gonna feel it. It's okay. We're gonna do the other side. Nice. And so you can see, or you can't see, but I'll tell you, he's not sitting on the heel. He's sitting right next to the heel, which is what we want. Lengthening, pouring forward to wherever feels good for you. Again, finding those deep exhales. And forward folds are very calming and relaxing, which usually means that the mind starts to drift away. Some of us check out our toenails, some of us other stuff. See if you can come back to just listening to your breath. Nice. Here we go. The head is relaxing. Love it. One last deep breath. Perfect. Okay. So releasing the legs, scooting forward onto the mat, we're going to eventually lay down on our back. So let's go slow. So we use our core. Good. Let's lay down. Great. So we'll start with a little bit of an inversion. We're keeping the hips on the ground, just taking the legs up to the sky, right? I want to send you into shoulder stand or any other, in any other inversions because most of them have too much pressure on the shoulders. You can also do this with a block or a pillow underneath the hips. You can also just go and lean against the wall. So the legs, if I were a wall, I Kent would just kind of relax here, and he can just relax here, right? So just stay here, um, I got you. Make sure your shoulders, again, are relaxing towards the ground. Probably palms facing up to allow the shoulders to drop down. Good, you can even take the arms slightly away from the body. You'll see the shoulders relax even more. Good. And bring the chin slightly to the chest to have length in the back of the neck. Love sunshine. Somebody did that for us. 
<laughs> right, we're gonna finish with a twist. So we're doing the twisting on the ground. We'll do a twist on the ground, any variation that you like. In this case, uh, Kent is gonna move his hips to the left side as much as possible, and then take the knees over to the right. Knees can be together or wrapping the left leg over the right. Either way is fine. Or just, and then the arm goes to the side. Kent can use his right arm on the leg if he wants to add a little extra energy. Oh, there's probably some deer going around. And I'm just going to give him a little bit of lengthening. I'm barely touching his shoulder. Well, it's not his injured shoulder, but still. Knock off. Everybody deepening your exhales, including you, Jacko. <laughs> <laughs> Got switching sides. So as you unwrap the legs, remember to move the hips to the other direction first. Great. Right? Then legs up. We're gonna other way. He's on your camera. It's okay. Let's place this one over. So the other way. Oh, there you go. All right. So we've got the right leg wrapping over the left. And just really relaxing here, no matter what happens, whether you got deer around or a barking dog, right? It's part of our practice, can we stay calm and chilled in this place? Double the length of the exhales if possible. So Ken's going to take a very short Shavasana today. You can stay there as long as you want. He's just going to lay down for about a couple of minutes. And as he lays, use it as an opportunity for therapy. So really letting your legs relax. And, you know, just make sure they're completely no tension. I'm going to take his arms and take them a little wider again because of the opportunity that it gives us to let the shoulders drop down towards the earth. And then you can go into complete bliss if you want, but if you are not there and your mind is a little active, see if you can focus your complete awareness into a sense of softening, like you're sending this beautiful white light to wherever you may experience some injury, some discomfort even, and see if you can, within your mind, send healings to yourself, to that area that needs it. I'm just going to sit here with Kent for about a couple of minutes. Hopefully you're there breathing and feeling that energy going into the shoulder. Visualizing the repair. Seeing your shoulder perfectly healthy. Start to transfer that to your whole body. You really feel your whole entire body feeling great right now. Taking a deeper breath. Bring the knees up. Feel free to roll on to one side and then slowly making your way up to sit. That's good. Yeah, it's, um, again, you may modify this. You may do this practice with a little extra movement of shoulders to get a little stretch in the shoulder. I try to give you a practice that has as little shoulders as possible so that if it really is injured, you can practice a little movement, but you can still have a full-on practice without putting any pressure on the shoulders. Thanks so much, Kent, for helping us demonstrate and practicing so yeah. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Namaste. Thank you all, and uh, namaste. Namaste.
please go ahead and hit the like button and if you really enjoyed let us know did it work for you what was great about this video and uh, subscribe namaste